Welcome back to the nuclear fission characteristics. So in this session, we will discuss different characters of the nuclear fission, like the mass distribution, the number of emitted neutrons, radioactive decay process of the fragments, and the fission, fission cross-section. Okay. So first, the mass distributions of the fission fragments. We know that uh, different different possibilities are there for each fission. For example, for this kind of fission means when a neutron induced fission of uranium-235 occur, there are many, many possibilities. See this one? This uranium plus neutron produces this uh, krypton 92 and barium 141 plus 3 neutron. And this one, the same, uh, the reactants produce the cesium 140 plus rubidium 94 plus 2 neutrons. And this one, this, you, uh, this produces the barium 144 and krypton 89. And here it is barium-139 and krypton-95. And this, in this way, a variety of uh, products are possible in each nuclear fission, in each induced nuclear fission. Okay, so this is one of the examples. So the mass distribution of these fragments, of these major fragments, we expect a symmetric mass distribution about a maximum since the corresponding to each heavy fragment like this one there is a small one to compensate the remaining mass and here also to compensate this uh, heavy fragment there is a light one and in all the cases there are these heavy fragments and the remaining uh, compensating light fragments. So we expect a symmetric pattern. But we will see the experimental result. So this is the experimental result. Even though we expect a symmetric distribution about the center, since uh, corresponding to every heavy fragment, there we expect a light fragment. But you can see there are two separate distributions of heavy and light fragments. So this x-axis is the mass number and y-axis is the mass yield. So you can see there is a symmetric distribution of light fragment centered about the 95, the mass number is equal to 95, and, and that of a, a heavy fragment centered about this mass number approximately A is equal to 140. So there are two bumps, two symmetric bumps instead of one. Okay, so, uh, so this is the characteristics of the low energy fission. Actually, we expect a single symmetric uh, bump centered about the uh, half of the mass. Okay, so at high energy, really, this becomes, you can see the one example. So this is our, this curve, this old curve, this, this one, this reddish one, this, that produced by the thermal induced fission. But you can see by the induced fission with this 14 MeV neutron, means fast neutron. So this bump is going to, or diminishing this is going to a single bump okay so with much higher energy this will merge into a single hump and it, it will be a, a symmetric curve a symmetric single humped curve as we expect okay so this is the characteristics of the low energy uh, fission The second peculiarity of the nuclear fission is the number of 
emitted neutrons actually the number of emitted prompt neutrons so we will explain what is meant by the prompt neutrons okay since the fission fragments are extremely neutron rich we know that uh, they are unstable again they are uh, out of the stability belt so they share the excess neutrons at the instant of fission itself that is with minus 16 seconds and these neutrons are called the prompt neutrons means the neutrons that are produced by the uh, with the fission itself are called the prompt neutrons okay so the number of prompt neutrons will depend on the the nature of the fragments produced and the energy of the incident particles in the case of induced fission so in the case of spontaneous fission it, it will depend only on the nature of fragments not on the nucleus okay and in the case of induced fission it will depend both on the natural fragments and the energy of the incident particles okay so the average number of the prompt neutrons represented by nu is the characteristics of the particular fission but not the nucleus okay so for the thermal induced fission of uranium 233 this average uh, number of prompt neutron is 2.48 for uranium, uranium 235 it is 2.42 and for plutonium 239 it is 2.86 okay so the number of uh, prompt neutrons emitted is varying in each and every case so in some cases it may be zero in some cases it may be 0.5 it may be one it may be two it may be three and like that it is and it is actually a distribution okay and uh, this distribution about the other average value is represented here and it is a gaussian so this gaussian behavior of the distribution of the emitted prompt neutrons is independent of the nuclei means for all kinds of nuclei we observe this kind of gaussian distribution and actually this is the expected statistical behavior for the evaporation process so we can assume that this uh, emission this emission of the uh, neutrons is prompt neutron is just like an evaporation of the molecules from the surface of a liquid okay besides the prompt neutrons there is another kind of neutrons that are emitted in nuclear fissions okay so the neutrons emitted from the fission fragments following their beta decay are called delayed neutrons why they are called delayed neutrons their delay time are typically of the order of 10 raised to of the seconds even though it is very short they are very very large compared to the production time of the prompt neutrons of order of 10 to minus 16 seconds and also their intensity is very very less that is one per hundred fission but they are very vital they are essential for the control of nuclear reactors since we cannot control the production of the prompt neutrons in any way since their uh, their production time is very very less and they are uh, they are produced the fission process itself along with the fission process itself so you can see an example for the production of this kind of uh, delayed neutrons so this rubidium 93 is one of the fission fragment of the uranium 235 and by the beta dk beta minus process it becomes this strontium strontium 93 and this strontium 93 is an excited state with much much high energy and it can uh, emit it emit a neutron or it shed a neutron and come down to the strontium 92 
so this neutron is produced by produced after six second time six second time after the uh, this nuclear fission okay okay so this is one example for the this delayed neutron the third characteristic of the nuclear fission is that the radioactive decay processes of the fission fragments means the initial fission fragments are highly radioactive and uh, they decay towards the stable isobars by beta decay gamma emissions and like that okay so they also contribute to the total energy release of the fission so you can see one example here these are the major fragments producing uranium fissions so rubidium 93 you can see by the six second time this becomes strontium 93 and by the time of seven minute this becomes this uh, y93 and this after the 10 hour this becomes the zr93 and then niobium 93 by the time of six years and so it is in this way this fission fragments uh, they are decaying continuously and they are uh, emitting some beta uh, beta particles and gamma rays to reach the stabilizer bar okay so they are highly radioactive and they are decay towards the table isobars okay so this is the one of the peculiarity of the nuclear fission the fourth and very very important characteristic of the nuclear fission is its fission cross section okay for induced fission the cross section represents the probability of interaction means the inducing particle and the nuclear so uh, you can see an example for the cross section for the uranium 235 and uranium 238 see the fission cross section for the uranium 235 in thermal region shows the 1 by V dependence, 1 by uh, inverse velocity dependence. Means as the energy, as the neutron energy, as the incident particle energy is increasing, this fission cross section is decreasing. And there are a lot of spikes which represent the resonances in this 1, 2, means 10 to 0 means 1 electron volt this 100 electron volt region, 1 to 100 electron volt region for the uranium 235 and another important peculiarity is for uranium 35 the thermal region cross section means the thermal region probability for the nuclear fission dominates over the scattering probability and the radioactive probability radioactive capture probability means you can see the cross section or the probability for the nuclear fission is 584 bond but the scattering probability is only 9 bonds and radioactive capture probability is 97 bond so the nuclear fission probability is much much larger than this uh, scattering and radioactive probabilities or cross sections okay for uranium 238 you can see there is no probability there is no cross section for the induced fission in this region up to this mev range so for a fission for a nuclear fission of uranium 238 it is needed the mev range neutrons or fast neutrons so uh, these are some peculiarities of the uh, fission cross-section, especially for the uranium-235 and uranium-238. Okay. Okay, thank you.